Hi there! In this video, we'll have a look at the configuration options regarding Shopware 6's search. We'll start by going into Settings, Shop, Search. The first section we see here is Search Behavior. In this section, you can set the most basic behavior on how Shopware handles a search request. If we'll go with the End Search, Shopware combines all terms we enter and only shows results that contain all our terms. The example listed here is Jeans Summer, meaning with the end search logic, the search would look for products containing both jeans and summer as terms. Conversely, we also have the or search logic. This setting results in Shopware considering each term we enter on their own instead, meaning if we were to stick to the example and search for the terms jeans and summer, we'd get results that include either jeans or summer. Down below, we can determine the minimal search term length. This setting determines the minimum length in characters a valid search term has to be. Until this character requirement is reached, the term will be ignored and not included in the search. It is worth mentioning that setting this to anything lower than 2 will be ignored by Shopware. Next up, we got the section Searchable Content. This is where we determine which parts of Shopware we want to include in the search process. The button here, Reset to Default, does exactly what it says on the tin. It restores the default configuration as we see it here. Be careful with that one, there is no confirmation prompt after it and it's saved right away. The next option we have is Show Example. This menu shows us three examples and how different settings would affect the results. The option below, Rebuild Search Index, will skip for now and get to that one later. The General tab's Content column is where we can see the searchable content within Shopware. This includes most areas where it would make sense to search in, in most shops. For example, product name is something you'll want to have included in all shops I can think of. We could also include things like manufacturers and product numbers, to name a few of the most commonly used ones. The column right next to it, Searchable, toggles whether we want to include that content in the search or omit it. Ranking score defines how heavily search hits for that content are weighted by the search. How relevant a search hit is, is determined by a score system. That score in turn is combined based on the rankings we determine here. The higher the score of a hit, the higher it is placed in the search results. By default, product name, for example, comes with a value of 700 compared to manufacturer number with 500. Meaning, if we had a product with the name identical to a manufacturer, the product name hit would be ranked higher in the search results than the manufacturer name. The last column we have is Split Search Terms. This setting allows us to set the search to split search terms on special characters like dashes or slashes. For example, if we were to search for the term jeans 2023 blue, with this setting activated, the search would split these on the special characters dash and slash, meaning effectively we'd be searching for three different terms, jeans, 2023, as well as blue. With the option deactivated, our search for jeans, dash, 2023, slash, blue, would search for exactly that in one term and not split on special characters. This setting mostly makes sense for something like product numbers, where variants share the larger bulk of a product number and are then identified by a few more numbers for the variant. The next tab is Custom Fields. It allows us to include our own custom fields for searchable content. We can include these by clicking here, Add Searchable Content, and then double-clicking into the empty field. This allows us to select a custom field of our own. After we're done setting it up, we have to use the blue checkmark button here to save it. As we can see, all the options in the columns here are the same as the ones in the General tab. Please keep in mind that you can only add custom fields of the types Number and Text. The last section is Excluded Search Terms. The terms we have or add here are omitted from our query when the search is started. For example, if I was to search for Jeans Hours, the query would be filtered and the search would only be performed for the term Jeans. Now that we're done setting everything up, we'll come to the option we skipped before. Rebuild Search Index.
This option rebuilds the search index based on the settings we made. If we do not rebuild the index, the search will still use the one from last time we built it and none of the adjustments we made since will have an effect. The search index is basically a collection of terms and possibly numbers. You can think of it like an index for a book. Only this one contains a lot more than merely chapters. The individual terms and the ranking scores indexed are determined by what content we toggled to be searchable as well as the rankings. If we were to change what content is searchable or how that content is ranked, we have to rewrite the index for it to take effect. For the last part of this video, we'll cover this, the live search tab. This is where we can preview how our search behaves with the settings we made. It also tells us when we last rebuilt the search index. Down here in the section Sales Channel Live Search, we get to the meat of this tab. We have to select the sales channel to provide context here in order to see the search results from the perspective of that sales channel first. Once that's taken care of, we can now enter our search term. Let's go with product, since most of my test shop products have a name including that part. The preview now shows us the results. We got various products and the matching term is underlined and highlighted in blue. It also tells us the ranking score the hit achieved. I can practically guarantee that in a larger shop with a bunch of products, you will spend a lot of time in this menu and test around in it. This is because an optimally working search requires a lot of fine-tuning. There's no real right or wrong setting here. It all depends on your individual store to find the right combination of settings to achieve the desired search results. And with this, we conclude the video about Shopware 6's search config.